Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews on How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at a ultra budget PC. This is uh, basically the lowest price PC that I think is actually actually makes sense to build these days in 2023, heading into 2024. We've got a selection of uh, low end parts which you can put together. You should be able to assemble this for somewhere in the region of around about £300. Now, obviously, there are going to be things like sales coming up. We've got Amazon Prime Day and also you've got Christmas sales, etc. So prices will fluctuate depending when you're watching this. And possibly before those sales, they may jack the prices up beforehand. So yeah, depending when this video is actually released, the prices may be slightly different. But don't worry, you can follow along. The links for all this stuff will be in the video description, as will be the PC part picker link. So if you're in an alternate country and you want to pick parts which are available to you, you can just go in, change the region at the top there on PC part picker, and you can find stuff which is available in your area. So with that said, let's take a look and see what we've actually got. So in case I haven't said it already, this is a very low-end PC. It doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. It's using integrated graphics. So temper your expectations. This will be able to play a reasonable amount of the modern games on the market at low settings. 1080p might be a stretch, but 720p should be okay. And with a lot of games now having features such as frame insertion, or scaling options then you should find some setting which will work for you we've done videos on this type of processor before i'll try and link those in the video description as well so you can get an idea of how it will actually play now the total price for us as of today's video recording date is 308 pounds and 34 pence now i have actually managed to get it under 300 pounds using very similar parts but the power supply that i was choosing to use seems to only have one left in stock from the particular supplier so i've chosen to omit that increase the budget slightly to uh, give it some availability. Anyway, let's take a quick rundown through the parts. So the kind of the star of the show on this is going to be the Ryzen 5 4600G. This is a six core processor with 12 threads and has a 3.7 gigahertz clock speed. It will boost up to, I think it's something like 4.4. This unfortunately is going to be locked into PCI Express Gen 3 speeds. So if you do want something a little bit faster, if you only want to pay about another 10 to 15 pounds more, I would strongly suggest if you can afford it, go for the Ryzen 5 5600G, which does have much better performance. So there is a warning to you. Also, this has got Vega 7, whereas I believe the other one's got Vega 8 or vice versa. Anyway, the newer revision, the 5600G is the better processor overall. Let's take a quick look at the specifications. So Ryzen 5 4600G. Uh, 12 threads, 6 cores, base clock 3.7 as we said, and you've got 8 meg cache. Combined cache is a little bit of a limitation here. You do have support for Windows 11, so if you're building a PC now, you're thinking, will it be able to run Windows 11, which is a problem with some older PCs, then you do have Windows 11 and Windows 10 support. And of course, you can use other operating systems, Ubuntu, etc, etc. Maximum boost clock, 4.2 gigahertz. And it has got integrated graphics. As I said, connectivity, PCI Express version only 3.0 and the maximum DDR4 supported speeds. In theory, are DDR4 3200 mega transfers per second. Potentially, you can get away with using faster, but realistically, that is all it's designed to use. Obviously, if you buy anything faster than that, then it's on your own head whether or not it's going to work or not. So going back to the listing, so motherboard wise, now there's a choice of two here and for varying reasons. So the one I've left in here is the ASRock B550M HDV. This is a very basic, no frills motherboard, but it is on the B550 chipset. So we do have some options for overclocking, should you want to. Now obviously this processor isn't really gonna overclock a great deal, but in certain instances, things like the graphics side of things, a little bit of tweaking can produce a little bit of extra power there. So if you do want that, and also the ability to, in future, go with a PCI Express Gen 4 processor, or a PCI Express Gen 4 graphics card, or M.2 drive, this one potentially will give you better options. So this is the motherboard here, so B550 MHDV, six phase power design, only two RAM slots, very limited IO, but it is a cheap board and it is running the B550 chipset. And um, at the time of recording is the cheapest B550 motherboard on the market. If you want to perhaps get a slightly nicer board, but potentially slightly more limited, then the other option, which was exactly the same price, is the ASUS Tough Gaming A520M-Plus. 
As you can see, this is a much nicer looking board. You also have some additional cooling over the VRMs here. Slightly better IO as well. And also there is a splattering of RGB, although no addressable RGB. We're limited on this one to only 12 volt RGB. So those old strips or AMD stock coolers. On the other board, this one, no RGB whatsoever. That may be preferable for some people. The choice, as always, is going to be down to the individual. Now, the other thing is with the Tough Gaming A520, we are limited here to PCI Express Gen 3 throughout. So your M.2 drive, your PCI Express graphics, etc., is all going to be on that lower speed. You do get the benefit of four RAM slots. So in terms of RAM upgrading, so if you want to go from 16 to 32 gigabytes, you can relatively easily just add in another two sticks. Also, power delivery slightly better on this board. We've got an eight pin input, rather with the ASRock, we've only got a four pin input, as you can see there. So yeah, it is a very limited board, but the B550 chipset is inherently faster with PCI Express Gen 4 times 16 slots available, should you want to use it and also the M.2 slots. So that those are the two real options at this price point. I would be tempted again, depending on what your thoughts are for the PC in terms of long-term usage, maybe spending slightly more money and going with something like the MSI B550 Pro Wi-Fi VDH. That is a decent all-round board and has pretty much all the bases covered. Lots of headers for fans, addressable RGB, Wi-Fi built in, all those kinds of cool features that you'd prefer on a slightly more premium board along with BOSS flashback and also a diagnostic LED for first time use to see what you've done wrong. Moving on to the RAM, the RAM and also the storage are gonna be somewhat commodity items. So depending where you are currently for us here in the UK, the Silicon Power Gaming, the 16 gig DDR4 3200CL16 is available for 33 pounds from Amazon Prime. We've used this before, it's absolutely fine. Of course, you can use Crucial or whatever is closer to your preference. There's all sorts of brands such as Clev, etc., which will have options for RGB, which won't be a great deal more expensive. But in this particular build, we don't really want to match up RGB or even have RGB if we can help it. So this was the cheapest option. Moving to the storage, again, same sort of deal. So this is a PCI Express Gen 3x4 drive which is gonna max out basically what we can get from the processor anyway, due to the limitations of that PCI Express Gen 3 buses and lanes. And again, if we go with the ASUS board, we are gonna be limited in this top slot to PCI Express Gen 3 anyway. If we go with the ASRock, this is a times four slot, the Hyper M.2 slot, but it is gonna be running at the slightly slower speeds, although realistically, you're never gonna notice it. Next up is the case. Now the case is gonna be somewhat of a flexible thing depending on what you want. But again, as we found in previous PC part picker guides we've done here, the Thermaltake S100 micro ATX case is pretty much the best bang per buck. Gives you some great ventilation and also has a, a very nice swing out door, which uh, you can just about see on this picture here. So you've got hinge door. So nice and easy access to your PC should you want to do any maintenance or cleaning. You've also got a ton of mesh on the front sides. Nothing on the front, it is a plain panel on the front. I think it looks really nice, somewhat understated. And if you're going for a almost zero RGB build, then I think it just looks really nice and quite plain on the front. Could be used as an office PC, should you wish to. Next up is gonna be the operating system. So I have actually included an operating system in this for the money. So if you don't wanna purchase a Windows license, you can take off around about five pounds off of this. We've gone for one, I've said they're £4.50. I think it's slightly dearer than that. If we go to premium CD keys forward slash Mike's Unboxing, you can head over there and you can pick up a Windows 10 Pro retail key for 4 99 that's euros, which converts down to around about £4.40, £4.50 for UK pounds. Obviously you can save yourself a ton of money there. So if you are building a PC and you're thinking of adding your Windows license, and you're thinking, oh God, that's gonna add 60, 70, 80 pounds to my build. Get yourself a key from premiumcdkeys.com. They are an affiliate and we do recommend them. We do get a very, very small kickback in terms of commission if you purchase a license, but obviously it's saving you a ton of money and we only get something like about 30 pence or something per key. So we're not gonna be uh, retiring early on this, 
but just wanted to highlight it to let you know that this is something which is available and is considerably cheaper than other CD keys from other mentioned YouTube channels, but I'm not gonna go into that. Next up is gonna be the power supply. Again, like I said, with the power supply, there were alternate options. Uh, we've gone with the GameX 500 Rampage, Absolutely fine power supply. It's using uh, main Japanese capacitors, got automatic power factor correction and all the kind of usual things you'd look for. So over voltage protection, under voltage protection, overheating protection, all that kind of good stuff. I've used these on numerous occasions and have yet to have one fail. And also they're basically silent, which is excellent. And this system is gonna be using something in the region of about 150 watts, I believe it was. It was rated, yeah, estimated wattage there, 149 watts, which I don't think is gonna get even close to that, to be honest with you. So our 500 watt power supply has got some PCI Express connections on there. So should you wish to insert a cheap RX 580 or a budget graphics card, you can certainly do that in the future without worrying about having to replace the power supply at a later date. So spend more now on the power supply, and it should offer some flexibility in terms of upgrades. So there you go, there's my thoughts on what you can do for a 300 pounds or thereabouts PC as of October, 2023. Please do let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Is there anything that you think desperately needs changing? Would you opt to spend slightly more on the motherboard to get a little bit more functionality, such as addressable RGB, more fan headers, Q flash, and possibly diagnostic LEDs, especially if you're a first time builder? That extra £20 spent now could potentially save you having to go to the local PC repair shop or to return components because you can't get them to work. Let me know what you think. I'd be very interested to know. And also, would you possibly stump up a little bit more cash for the 5600G rather than the 4600G? Or potentially, would you maybe just go with a 5600 straight processor and a cheap used graphics card? Very interested to hear what your thoughts will be on this matter. Essentially, it is a £300 or thereabouts PC, so there are going to be some things which you are going to compromise on. That is the nature of having a limited budget. There's always going to be some compromise, but otherwise, what would you do? Is there another PC that you would opt for, or would you just give in and buy yourself an Xbox? Let me know in the comments section. I'll be interested to read your feedback on this one. If you've got any comments or questions regarding this at all, obviously put them in that section. If you want some more one-to-one -one help, maybe setting up your PC or configuring your own build list, then head over to our Discord. The links for that will be in the video description also. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.